Welcome to the USCA American Rules National Championships, October 2021. This is doubles competition. We start off with Sandy Knuth playing blue at a handicap of 2.0. She's followed by Randy Cardo playing red at a handicap of minus two and a half. Randy's actually the defending national champion in this event. It wasn't held in 2020. He won his singles championship in 2019. And he's also won two doubles championships at American Rules with Danny Honeycutt, who's standing there watching. We're at the National Croquet Center in West Palm Beach on court four. Looks like about one or two in the afternoon based on the shadows because we're looking due east. Atlantic Ocean is about two and a half miles away in that direction. Joining Sandy and playing black is Sharif Abdelwahab at minus three. Sharif has multiple national championships, and I've detailed those in other videos. Your tournament director is Rich Curtis, and your videographer, again, is Brian Hovis. Rounding out the lineup is Danny Honeycutt playing yellow, joining Randy Cardo as a doubles partner. His handicap of minus four is the second best in the country. Only Ben Rothman at minus four and a half is lower, and actually Danny was the first one to ever get to minus four and a half. He has multiple national championships as well that everybody knows about. This is championship doubles, and it's the second round in the winner's bracket in the double elimination format. They were in the same block. Danny and Randy won four of their five games. Sharif and Sandy won three of their five games. And the time that they met, Danny and Randy won 26 to two. Double elimination, of course, applies only to the knockout. So whoever wins this stays in the winner's bracket. Whoever loses has just one loss and goes into the loser's bracket. So now the state of the game, Randy came in with red with a jump shot. Sandy came in with blue a little bit later. So now we have two balls in the game and black and yellow playing the out game. It's worth noting that a double tap in the out game is not a fault if it's caused by the striker ball hitting the object ball. If it's caused by your hitting the stanchion though, then it's a fault, and I think that's probably what Danny was trying to avoid there. Setting up a Tice to try to get Red to shoot. He's not taking the bait, I guess, because that would, if he hits it, that would put him a long way from his hoop. He'd be dead on blue. He wouldn't be able to wire himself from it, and it really wasn't much advantage to hitting it. It's a perfect setup for an in-off, as in golf croquet, which he did. But because yellow went out, his turn is over. Yes. 
three. So red is going to be the spent ball for black in every turn. So only black will either attack or do a croquet out, and red has to position himself so that that's not profitable for blue and black. And black may be wired from both red and blue, certainly from blue by the hoop. But black's responsible for his own position, so there's no lift involved. Occupying corner four, because that may be where red wants to go to get as far away from hoop two as possible. And spoiler alert, this is going to go on for a while. With both of these teams, whoever gets the first break has a pretty good chance of winning. And they're going to spend a lot of time trying to get that little bit of advantage. Giving Black a potential rush into corner one. So Red needs to move. Stay in the corner if you want to. We can't do anything with you. Setting up to keep red from going in front of hoop two. And yellow staying out of the game, hoping to get blue or black to attempt hoop two and thus give yellow and red a possible advantage. In the jaws like that, yellow is vulnerable should, for instance, black get in and go around and knock it out of position, making two back. But if red plays correctly, they're only going to get a two ball break, and that's a little unlikely, although Sharif is quite capable of going around with a two ball break. Balls in the game are dead on balls out of the game. She could have had yellow lifted, but she could barely see half of it. So this was extremely unlikely. So a dead ball fault of no particular consequence. Yeah. Red passed. And we'll try again. The other major vulnerability of yellow in that position in hoop one is that blue could candidate into the game 
using black, setting up a three ball break for black. There's no way Danny's going to let that happen, but it's a possibility. He's not going to move it much, but what he's doing does make that cannon maneuver a little harder. And now with red a long way away, black could set up the cannon option for blue by giving it a rush to hoop one now. Had Sharif done that, however, I'm sure Danny would have come in the game on this turn. And of course, the reason he keeps putting yellow there is that keeps blue or black from taking on hoop two from so far away. I think they're aiming at red in corner three. Looks like he thought so too. On his 10th turn, Danny finally brings in yellow. And with a very precise shot to corner four, sets up an attack by Red. They know Red's coming, so a little bit of a wide join. Any place she had put blue a long way from black would have been vulnerable to a croquet out. The wide join at least forces the attacking ball to get three ball dead. And we get the first croquet shot of the game 21 minutes in. Nice control. He's going to hit first the ball he wants to leave behind. Yellow's a long way from his hoop, too, so he wants a rush 
to make this break easier to get started. Thinking about putting Black far enough away that he'll be able to set up at hoop two, maybe. He's asking about wiring from yellow and blue, I think. I didn't hear the answer. But he may be because he's going to try to set up in front of hoop two where black can still see him however it rolled off I can't tell what he's wired from the I've played Sharif a few times, and a couple times he told me, Dilly, you can't hide from me. And that's what he's talking about. Unfortunately for him, this is American rules, not AC. In AC, he's off to the races. and American rules, probably not. The boundary is the inside edge of that chalk line, and out of bounds is determined by the position of the center of the ball, not the edge of the ball, as in AC because black knocked yellow out, his turn is over, but at least he incurs no deadness on yellow. And after a full 21 minutes of cat and mouse, Danny Honeycutt gets the first break of the game. Sure. Yeah, I'll put some more. 
okay. Aiming the object ball at hoop five, the way he's doing here, is a good way to increase the ratio on your roll shots without having to put a lot of aggressive action on the striker ball. It's probably more useful when you're closer to the hoop and it's easier to do, but it's something to keep in mind. Wiley mentions it specifically, and Danny Johnston, the Irish player that Howard Sosen has included in a couple of his innovations events, loves to do that. The two main tactical questions on Danny's mind as he runs his three ball break are one, when does he pick up black in corner one? That'll make a four ball break out of it, but more importantly, black will then be available to give to red when he finishes the lead with yellow. And two, will it be able to get red clean by peeling it through hoop two or will he just leave it in the jaws of two because red of course went three ball dead setting up this break that rush put red probably about exactly where he wanted it he wants to get close enough to the boundary ball that he can take off to it and pick it up without undue risk but if he had rushed red a lot closer to black then he would have difficulty putting it out where it would be easy to reincorporate back into the break. That was close. <laughs> if yellow had hit red, it would have been a turn ending dead ball fall in America rules. In a C, he would still have his continuation shot because there's no penalty for hitting a ball you're dead on. You may wonder why I'm making all these comparisons between American rules and AC rules. It's partly because we've had a bunch of inquiries from South Africa and England, Australia, about the American rules game, and partly because all the top players are much better American rules players because they also play AC.
after this next row K, he could do a three-quarter roll, sending blue to one back and putting yellow behind black, rushable to hoop six. But positioning yellow in that shot is difficult. It's a whole lot easier if he does a pivot swap now, leaving blue as the pioneer at two back, getting yellow behind red, facilitating a rush down closer to black so he's more sure of getting what he needs to rush black to hoop six and keep the break going. And now, instead of just taking off from black and leaving it in pivot position, he's going to use it as an escape ball so he can get red clean by peeling it through hoop two. You still the doubles plate. One of the reasons that AC has changed the way these guys play American rules Three ball dead. What? Me worry? I'll just back peel it when I get to its hoop. With the emphasis, of course, on back peel. Nobody in their right mind would peel red now. If the peely sticks in American rules, you're done. So it's a back peel, which means that the striker and the partner ball are for the same hoop in opposite directions. The striker makes its hoop first and then peels the partner ball back through its hoop. He'd like to do this peel with a straight stop shot, which will work as long as he has room to leave yellow a shot on black that's not hampered by the hoop.
Thanks, Randy. There are a jillion ways to do this, but I find that leaving the spent ball as the pioneer at Pinault, as he's doing, makes it easier to avoid getting last that on partner at the end of the break. And this is why you leave the spent ball at Penalt. You can drop it off at Red's hoop. And then when he brings Red back down to its hoop three after he makes Rover, he can put Red on the boundary and get clean off black so that he won't be last dead on partner. Danny does have to weigh the pros and cons of going to peg and having a Rover ball that can control the game versus the risk of being pegged out if the other team gets in. 
If you're going to stop early because you're afraid of being pegged out, you probably shouldn't even make four back. Because for these guys, a ball at Penalt or Rover is not much of a deterrent since they're all such experts at peeling turns in AC. And for the AC players, yes, he is making Rover in the proper direction. And yes, if he goes through Rover hard and hits the peg, his turn is over and yellow's out of the game. So he leaves blue, the ball that plays next, about as far away as he can get it. Goes to double check where he wants to put red so that blue can see it. And in this critical rush, wants to hit red far enough that he can safely place it on the boundary in the croquet shot and yet not knock it out of bounds. Yellow, the rover ball, will end up three ball dead. But he can then get clean going through any hoop in any direction, which will make him last dead, in this case on black. What that means for the AC players is that in his next turn, as soon as he rokays either blue or red, he's then live on black. Wiring black from blue with hoop three. And now yellow, the rover ball, is last dead on black, which is what that half ball signifies. Classic demonstration of setting up the unhittable leave. So if blue shoots at those balls on the boundary and misses, she leaves red a four ball break. If she corners, then red has a laid three ball break. Because there is a 45 second shot clock, each team can call timeout three times during the game for one minute each. In AC, you can go have T without calling timeout.
in a load and hold, he would be sending yellow to four as a pioneer with a stop shot that put red in front of the hoop in hoop shooting position. This is not a load and hold, but it's basically the same shot. It's just a lot easier because he has a pioneer. As we mentioned earlier, Randy Cardo has won the U.S. National Championships three times, twice in doubles and once in singles. Sharif and Sandy aren't making any big bets on their chances right now. Happens to the best of us. So red and yellow are up 16 to 2. Blue and black are both still for a hoop 2. I don't think that red ball is touching or even actually that close to the stanchion of the hoop. So Sharif's not going to bother to have it watched. Only way he can move red is to hit it.
Is that? Uh, no, we just we want to be curious about something. Danny called a phone on something. I wasn't sure of. I can't find the phone in the book, so I'm just curious. He could give this break to Blue now, but he's not going to do that because. Yellow, the danger ball, is the ball that's for the peg. And he wants to be able to go to peg with black and peg out yellow so there's no ball to take the shot on the unhittable lead. And when he does that, they'll be down by four because he'll have pegged out yellow. Black will be for the peg. Blue will be for two and red for five. And he's pretty sure Sandy can catch up four or five hoops in a two-to-one game as long as they have 15 or 20 minutes to do it. It'll be easier both to run the break and set the leave if Blue is out on the lawn. And because he has an excellent hoop three pioneer, now's the best time to go get Blue. This next shot is one that all of the top American players, I think, have trouble with compared to the standard in AC internationally. Putting enough action on the back ball is critical in a pass roll like this. Sharif's the resident pro at the NCC, so if you're having trouble with this shot, Stop by and get a lesson from him. That idea that I mentioned during Danny's break of not going past four back if you're concerned about being pegged out is standard thinking, but I have personal experience with this. Sharif did it to me in the doubles game for the championship in Southampton once. I was for Rover, and he got in, went around, peeled me through Rover, pegged me out, and won the game. Here's a quiz for you. 
why is he setting up to double load one back with a relatively tricky pass roll rather than just leaving Blue there as a two-back pioneer and taking off to the ball at hoop six? In AC, in his first break, he might have done this because he wanted Blue to be the pioneer at two back so he could set a diagonal spread, but that's obviously not the case. I think the answer to the quiz is that he knew he wanted to send yellow to four back after one back, and he needed an escape ball in red to do that.
And to complete the answer to the quiz, he wants to peg out yellow. So he wanted it at four back so that he could rush it back toward the peg after four back. Not because he predicted that he was going to trap red behind Rover and absolutely need an early pioneer at four back. And now because the spent ball is trapped and because he's going to peg out yellow, he doesn't have time to set up bringing blue back to its hoop after Rover. He needs to do it now so that blue will be set for a break when her turn starts. And blue's in great position so he won't have to hit it again and risk getting last dead on partner. a position remarkably similar to the one that started this break. They were down 16 to 2 when Sharif got in with black off of red stuffed in hoop 5. He went from 2 to the peg. He's pegging out yellow. Now they're down by 4 with blue and black against red. And there's about 17 or 18 minutes left. Consultation about where to put black to be most useful to blue. He initially was going to go for corner 2 but ended up for corner three. Then there was a timeout 
consultation with the rule book and a long discussion about when red has to take its one back clearance in order not to lose it. They want to wait and make that decision based on what happens to blue. The rule book says you have to take it before your next turn and since yellow doesn't have a turn that means before red's next turn so they haven't taken that clearance yet. And this is exactly why. If she were to stuff that hoop, because Red hasn't taken his one back clearance yet, he could get a wiring lift to blue, take off to five and either make it or set up for it, because black has to make a hoop to clear his deadness on Red. But they're not going to give him that. <clears throat> So blue gets out of dodge, making sure that red can see blue. And he takes his one back clearance before this shot, which he takes because blue and black are both dead on red. And he hits it hard enough that he's not trying to pick these balls up. He's trying to get between them. Just as good. Because now he gets to decide how the balls get placed back in. And they'll put red that he's dead on between him and blue, the only ball he's live on. He could set blue a rush to her hoop too. But there's plenty of time to set up a much safer approach to hoop two for blue. So he's just going to go to corner two. What's going on here? It should be it should be enough time. And Red's just gonna keep chasing him. But now blue's a lot closer to her hoop. For the AC players, the rule book says you announce the time at 15 minutes and one minute. It varies all over the place, though, depending on personal preference. And the players, of course, can ask how much time is left any time they want to. She's wiring black from red using hoop two. Blue gets clean and gets out of dodge. I know you can all figure out the score from the clip positions, but that last column of points makes it easier for me to keep track in this game of cat and mouse with incremental advancement. They may have put blue there because red can see a little bit of black and might take the shot, so blue is guarding red shot on black, which he's not going to take anyway. After deliberation, red passed. Blue gives black an excellent rush back towards red, which is right at blue's hoop, so a croquet out would have ended the game. Red gets on the other side of the court because of that. If they didn't have lots of time, I bet he would do the croquet out now by rushing blue over to three and then kicking it back out of bounds next to red, leaving black as a pioneer at three. 
but they've got enough time that they don't need a break to win this game. They can do it one hoop at a time. She probably wants to make this hoop and then get out of bounds over where Sharif is standing to guard red shot on black. But this will do just as well so long as red misses black. But it turns out that red is wired from black. He's obviously wired from blue. But he's responsible for his own position so he doesn't get a lift. So he's shooting at blue, which is why somebody's out there to watch that. She's hoping for a rush on black to hoop four. Not getting it and not wanting to leave red any chance. Blue's going to get out of bounds instead of doing the roll up. And again, guarding red shot on black. Eight minutes left. And you thought black was going to go to blue, didn't you? So did I, but this is all about time. Make one hoop at a time and don't give red anything. And again, if red stays around blue's hoop, they'll make him pay for it. Taking no chances on a long rush to Blue's Hoop. Not even willing to use a cut rush to Blue's Hoop. Yep. 
I don't know what he's doing here. Probably trying to put two back in the way of rushing red toward five if they come after red. And once again, wiring black from red with the hoop. He could have given Blue the rush here to hoop five, and she could have taken it, but any mistake would have left Red a relatively short shot. So instead, Blue gives Black the rush. Red's still not going to take that shot. And now he does something that will let him get clean and let her tie the game as well. I think game time just ended. So blue is first ball in last turn. And the score is now tied. So she'll roque black, make hoop six, and then either get both balls out on a boundary or maybe wire them from red so that red has next to no chance of finishing. That miss gives Red one last chance. Sharif and Sandy by one hoop. So they move on in the winner's bracket and Randy and Danny drop into the loser's bracket with still a chance to come back and take it all. I don't know about you, but I think there's a lot to learn from watching this game two or three times. Give us a like, subscribe, and you'll get notified when the next one comes up.